how do you use your present moments? See, any time you use up your present moment, or any time that you are thinking anxious thoughts, you're denying the present. You're using up the present moment. Instead of using it up in a productive, peaceful, serene, calm way, you are somehow believing that you can't get through this day or this moment any other way. That if I don't think about it and worry about it and be anxious about it, but the fact is it's going to get done. Your taxes are going to get done. You're not going to jail. <laughs> You're not the kind of person who's going to opt to just simply not do your taxes. You're going to get the diapers. You're going to get the report done. All of that you're going to get done. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in the position that you're in. You would be doing something else, all right? Worry is using up the present moment to be immobilized about something that's going to happen. You don't worry about the past. You feel guilty about the past. Guilt is about the past in the present Worry is about the future in the present. Remember, everything is experienced now in the present moment. And again, the payoff for worry is what could I be doing in this moment if I weren't worrying? And then you say, well, my worry is keeping me from doing these things, taking this action, changing this behavior, moving on in a new direction, getting out of that relationship, whatever. Now, people worry about everything. People worry about their health. People worry about their children. They worry about dying. They worry about their job and the economy and having a heart attack and security and everybody else's happiness. And am I doing the right thing? And the prices and whether we're going to, the economy is going to collapse and accidents and what if I have one and what do other people think about me and, and my weight and my money and my car breaking down and my bills and my parents maybe getting sick or getting into heaven or, or what if there's no God, or the weather, or getting old, or flying, or my daughter's virginity, or talking in front of groups, or going into the city, and even the most neurotic of all is worrying about having nothing to worry about, which I've had people do. <laughs> I don't have anything to worry about, but then that's what worries me, because I just know that when I don't have anything to worry about, then something's going to go bad, and there they go off again. Now, here's the greatest piece of advice that any human being could ever receive. I know that sounds a little bit on the conceited side, but it is the most important advice that you could ever get about worry. Listen carefully. It makes no sense to worry about the things that you have no control over, because if you have no control over them, it makes no sense to worry about them. Right? If you have no control over something, getting older or dying or getting into heaven or whatever it may be, then worrying about it isn't going to do you any good. So it makes no sense to worry about the things you have no control over, because if you have no control over them, it makes no sense to worry about them. And it makes no sense to worry about the things that you do have control over, because if you've got control over them, it makes no sense to worry about them. And there goes everything you could ever worry about in your life. If you don't have control, you relax and you flow and you let it go. You just let it go. Worrying about something you have no control over makes absolutely no sense. And if you do have control over it, then take control. Whatever it is that you want to do, if you're afraid of flying in an airplane, you have control over that. You, there are trains available, there are cars available, there are courses and ways to go about learning uh, how to eliminate your fear of uh, flying, and so on. So you can either do something about it, or you can choose not to do something about it. And either way, it isn't going to make any difference in your life. If you choose to worry, it just doesn't help anything. So once you learn that, you can, you can begin to, to, to assess this whole business of why you would choose guilt or worry in your life. And again, you look back over and over and over again at it and you dissect it and you tear it all apart and you go to your analyst and you, and you spend a thousand years in therapy and you find out that everything that you experience in your life, you experience in the present moment, the working unit of your life, and you experience it in the now for a reason. If you choose guilt or if you choose worry, you, you cannot be active and creative and fulfilled and changing and doing all kinds of good and exciting things for yourself in your life now if you are occupying your now with worry and guilt. And if you think that worry is something that you just inherited or it's something that your parents passed on to you uh, and, and it's something that you just can't do anything about, begin to practice. Do things like I always tell people, just worry. 
Just sit there. I used to tell my uh, patients over and over again, just sit there and worry. Show me what you're doing when you're worrying, and you begin to see how silly it is. It's just a it's just a mental exercise that is all caught up in uh, in in this silliness, and all the things that you ever worry about. There's a wonderful old saying that says, "I'm an old man, and I've had many troubles, most of which have never happened." And the most of which have never happened is all the worries. You get all these worries, and you see them coming at you, and you, oh my goodness, why I'm gonna, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get audited by the IRS. I remember the first time I ever got audited by the IRS, and I talked about it, and I was playing this same silly game, worrying about it, and what, and then I went through the, and it was a very pleasant experience, and I actually ended up getting a little bit more money, a little more of a refund. All of this concern, all of this time, all of this energy over something that wasn't, and it's happened to me many times. I've been through that. That process, and I've, I don't worry about those things anymore. Now I have people in my life who handle those things, and I don't occupy my mind with that. And I do the same thing with my children. And I have seven beautiful children, and I watch them grow up. And I know that there's all kinds of pitfalls and things out there that can. Have, but I can't. Keep, I can't keep my eye on every one of my children all day long when they're in school or when they're in their jobs or when they're in their relationships or whatever. I simply can't do that. So I have the choice: Am I going to stay, uh, st- sit around all day long and worry about each one of those children and whether or not they're going to be uh, in any danger? Or am I going to just raise them to be as careful and uh, productive as they possibly can and know that I can't do anything about that? And this isn't to say that I'm unconcerned. It is to say that I refuse to use my life filling it up with worry over things that I can't do anything about. I just can't go that way. And you don't have to either. Just like guilt has the... The notion that there's a difference between guilt and learning from the past. You do something, and instead of feeling guilty about it, you learn from it. Uh, worry is uh, is one thing, and preparing yourself for the future is something quite different. Uh, but again, preparing yourself or planning for the future is still something that takes place in the now. So what you want to learn to do is to enjoy it in the now, instead of trying to live it two months from now or three months from now, enjoy the planning process. If you're going to have a vacation uh, three months from now, uh, that's a very enjoyable process. All of that planning and all of the activity that goes into it and all the expectations and then the anticipation of what that's going to be like, that's one of the most joyful things about a vacation, uh, all of that planning part. That isn't worry. Worry is when you are immobilized. The key word to define an erroneous zone is, does it immobilize me in the present? And if the answer is yes, then it's something I want to get rid of.